Hey friendos, my name is Nez and welcome back for some more Monster Camp! Today we're going after yet another secret ending. I think we've already made videos in about two thirds of all the endings. And until that content drought happens and maybe we'll move on to Cyberpunk 2077, let's play! One player, short game. Ah, Camp Spooky, the stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then we were young and afraid. With school far away, everything seemed possible as the sun embraces on our way to camp. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days while the nice and evil you with possibilities. It's like life could take a turn at every corner. And for us, it did. Who are you? Let's play as Amira. Gonna win at camping. One might say that the monster prom had hardened us in the highs and lows of love. But no, in love we're always absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of summer love loomed over our heads. Close to the last day of camp, there was a meter shower happening just three weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was a monster problem all over again. Everything seemed uncertain, everything but one thing. Whoever we were going to ask on a meter shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Jojima, a badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless of times. Aravi Mishra, a hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Calculus Hewlett Packard, a library computer that became a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Dalia Kino, a buff blue demon and warmonger who had set her sights on conquering summer next. Demi LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Mila Belladonna, a Death Reaper doubling as an internet influencer who is also profoundly in love with life and all of its earthly pleasures. The bus trip was long and all of summer could be shaped by the very first step well taken. And so it was clear it came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. Time to break the ice, what's your favorite hobby? Raising succulents, being popular, crimes, saving the world, very anime workouts, efficient farming. Let's go with saving the world. We'll be targeting Joy. It'd be nice if we could get her flask ending. Ooh, are you dabbling in world saving Ness? Nice! I've pretty much made it my full time job! If you ever wanted to take your heroism beyond a hobby, I could give you some great pointers on how to stop the apocalypse in its tracks and still have time for a social life. Maybe we could hang out a bit this summer in between saving countless lives. What do you say? Uh, sure, why not? We only have three weeks left to woo our crushes though and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid and we were ready to start. Back to Camp Spook, here we go, friendos! Okay, week one, morning. Where do we go? Let's go to... The Haunted Manor! While you're exploring the Haunted Manor, you hear a voice calling your name. It comes from under the bed. Two blood-red eyes stare from you from the inky darkness under the bed. A voice that sounds older than time whispers. Do you want some boldness, Nez? You say, uh, yes, because you actually do want that. Okay, here you go. Whatever that thing is, it gives you two boldness. What a nice under the bed thing. You're taking a walk, which is your go-to excuse to get some good farts out. When you see Joy and Scott, looks like they're wandering around with cameras and taking pics. Hmm, hmm Scott, I'm trying to get a good shot of an extremely dead possum over here, but I can't get the focus quite right. Any ideas? Uh, what? uh Coach always says that you gotta stay focused the whole game. Even if there might be a bone buried under the field, does that help? You've gotten a sufficient amount of farts out for the time being, so you wander over and ask what these two hotties are up to. Oh, hi. oh, Scott and I are just taking pictures for the photography class. Photography keeps me slightly distracted from the constant never-ending stress of my world-saving duties. Whoa. And I Whoa. love taking Whoa. pictures! You know that feeling when someone pats your head for being a good boy? If you take a picture, you can remember it forever, instead of just 15 minutes! Ugh. What are you doing here, Nez? You're not by any chance here to follow us around and try to get one of us to sleep with you. You start nervously sweating in the sure joy that you're not here to increase your sats until one of them agrees to bone. You're here because, uh, you, uh, you... Because you also love photography! Yeah, that's it, let's go with that. To prove it, you whip out your phone to show them all the pics you've taken of your semi-nude body. Wait, we're doing photography! That's a phone! Phones don't take pictures! Don't worry, it's an easy mistake to make. I get my camera confused with calculus all the time. You show Scott that your phone can indeed take pictures. You open your camera app, snap a picture of his tail, though it's wagging a lot, and show it to him. Whoa! A phone that can take a picture! And it can also take a call? I didn't know that one thing could do two things! Let's 
Yes, doing? you're obviously some kind of photography expert. You gotta check out my technique and give me coach tips to improve my form. Scott shows you enjoy his picture taking um, technique, which is mostly just pointing at shiny objects excitedly and throwing his camera at them. He tells Scott that you've got a game changing tip for him, he just needs to press a big black shiny shutter button on the camera. That'll up his game up for sure. <laughs> Wait a second, Scott. Have you not been pressing the shutter button? We've been out here for three hours! God, it's no wonder you got an incomplete on our last assignment! Ah. Wait, so if you hit the big button, the camera actually takes the picture? Before, I was just politely asking the camera to take it! My mind is blown! Well, even I have to admit that was a pretty helpful piece of advice. I'm almost convinced you're not just here to sleep with one of us. <laughs> so if you're really such a fan of photography, surely you could give me some pointers too, right? I'd love to learn from your expertise. Uh-oh, Joy's calling your bluff and she'll be way less easy to impress than Scott. You'll have to convince her you're a real pro or you'll uh, yet again be exposed as super horny. So Ness, why don't you tell me? What's your biggest photography secret? Uh, well... I cannot disclose photography's biggest secret, Joy. I'd be betraying photography's trust. Or... Okay, so you knew about the button to take pictures, but what about this other secret button? It's to take, uh, better pictures, yes! Ah, uh, I say we go with... We will not disclose photography's biggest secret, Joy. You tell Joy that you take your friendship with photography seriously, so you can't share your friend's secrets. That's a dick move. Enough of this. Wow, Nez, that makes zero sense. Like none. Nonsense. It's nonsense nonsense. Oh, bro. Really, Joy? I thought Nez was being kind of a good friend. Because bros respect bros' privacy, you know? Hmm. Well, I guess that is a good point. Respecting privacy is one of my foremost values as a feminist and cult practitioner. To be honest, I've been working with my therapist lately to try to be a bit more patient with people and judging a bit less. <laughs> Especially when it comes to my friends, you know. I want to value my friends based on their intentions, not their admittedly limited intelligence. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome! I love being judged by my intentions, and not by how long I can sit still with my peanut butter on my nose! <laughs> exactly, Scott. That's a good point, and sitting still with peanut butter in your nose would probably be hard for anyone. So, Nez, even though your comment was dumb, like super insanely unfathomably dumb, not half bad. it showed that you value the intimacy of your friends, and that's what really matters. Joy pats you on the head and gives you a snickerdoodle cookie, yay! For a second, you wonder if Joy was talking about you when she said she wanted to judge people less based on their intelligence. But who cares, you're eating a cookie, and let's be honest, you are pretty dumb. You don't get any smarter from this whole encounter, but Joy's magical snickerdoodle gives you two bonus and one fun. Wait, did Narrator just call us stupid? Did Joy just call us stupid? Honey? Anyway, week one evening, where do we go? Let's go to the lake. That day, you decide to go scuba diving and find a treasure chest at the bottom of the lake. Whoa! You pick the lock, which is quite impressive if you keep in mind you're still underwater. Inside, you find over 1,000 fun! Unfortunately, your wetsuit doesn't have pockets, so you go back to shore with only two fun. When you come back, the fish have eaten the rest! They're having a rave right now! Fucking fish! Finally, I Thank can fucking read god peace. we finally have time to chill and sunbathe! I've been meaning to work on my tan this summer. I'm hoping to go from deathly pale to gothic white. Ah yes, microdosing toxic levels of UV radiation in an effort to bronze one's skin. It is one of the most aesthetically pleasing ways to slowly die. Ooh. While my skin is incapable of darkening, I am here to recharge. I installed solar panels exclusively to spend more time with my friends. Calculus. Summer camp has taught me so many alternative ways of bonding with my organic peers. This afternoon will be perfect. Uh, uh sup? I've got a pizza delivery for Milo and Joy. I guess tanning makes you too hungry or something. Gasp! I have no way to simulate consuming calories. My one weakness. Uh, <sighs> Are you serious? We did not order pizza. Unless pizza somehow became vegan overnight or this is a cleverly disguised magical weapon for saving the world. Uh. Um, pretty sure this is just a large mushroom and pepperoni. But if you eat it, you'll save me from getting chewed out by my manager for delivering the pizza to the wrong person. Then, hard pass. I despise delivery food. Joy despises meat and dairy. And Calculus who despises being excluded from our activities. Be gone, thought. Uh, no, trust me, this is your pizza. Corporate even gave me this legal invoice that you all need to sign in order to prove I'm not delivering the pizza wrong again. Look. <gasps> These are indeed your signatures. I think I understand what is going on here. Friend Pizza Girl, could I please borrow your phone for a moment? Are you going to do something about her horrendous Instagram? Girlfriend, you've got to take some more selfies wearing something other than that dingy delivery uniform. Mm -hmm. 
It is as I feared. According to the pizza parlor's internal delivery app, Joy and Milo did indeed order this pizza, but from an alternate reality. Worst episode what? Ever. I fucking hate these multiverse plot arcs. They're so contrived and way too hard to follow. Whatever, man. Uh, not my problem. Point is, you two ordered this pizza and policy says you have to pay for it and eat it before I go. Pay and eat? I'll do neither one, thank you very much. Every day we must ask ourselves what we're willing to put in our mouths, and this is where I draw the line. Well, if the pizza girl won't leave until you eat, the solution is clear. You have to find some versions of Joy and Milo that actually ordered this pizza, but how? Uh, art lets you travel without leaving home, pen a beautiful poem to open a rift between realities. Or you once heard of an elite squad who traveled through realities to fight entropy and save the multiverse. They could deliver the pizza. Elite squad who travels realities to fight entropy. Is that a reference to Arcadum's D&D games on Twitch? We will go with the Elite Squad. And so you follow a trail of rumors through dark taverns and shadowy alleys, talking to strange individuals in long dead languages. Finally, you acquire a rune that you must place in a specific highly secretive location. When you do so, a rift is cut through the air, revealing a floating air vessel. Aboard it are people who appear to be your friends, except they're cooler and sexier and have lots of dope battle scars. Among them is Wharton Miranda Vanderbilt. She's corrected her genocidal worldviews after the Mer Kingdom of her reality waged war against Hell and Lost, ending in the destruction of both realms and the death of Miranda's demonic lover. She learned the ugliness of war and abhors the past wrongs of her Mer Kingdom and now fights for justice. Holy shit, this is the first time we've seen Miranda in this game, and this version seems so cool! There's also reformed Dark Lord Liam the Lion Court. In his reality, he ruled the dark side and enslaved the world after he obtained the magical Heart of Death, which he devoured for its power. But after centuries of his tyrannical rule, he realized the error of his ways and joined this group of heroes in hopes of keeping the dark side at bay. Every day, he struggles with the powerful evil entity that now lives in his heart. There's also Zagord survivor Veer Oberlin, Vampire Scott Howell, and other Liam, except this one is blue and so much more. It's Monster Cat into the Cappyverse all up in this bitch. Impressive. Holy shit! This is a lot! I've never seen so many different morally dubious versions of my ex in one place before! <laughs> I gotta admit, he looks pretty good in blue. You tell the crew you'd like to speak to the captain, the crowd parts and out steps an interdimensional version of you! Hello, Nez, says Captain Nez. Yeah, soak it all in. In my reality, I got over all my constant horniness, and that clarity of mind allows me to lead the fight against evil. Um, so how's Summer Camp? Oh my god, this version of us seems so much cooler. It's fabulous, darling. By the way, I love the eye patch. We've got a mission for you. Of course you do. What's a threat? Sigurd? The dark side? The Mer Kingdom? Uh, nope, it's worse. My missing tip sense. money. We're looking for a dimension where Joy Johnson, Jojima, and Mila Belladonna order this pizza. Oh, of course, says Blue Liam. It's another wacky misadventure that's typical of horny Nez. And it makes sense, says Volsel Captain Nez. The Joy and Milo of Reality Cygnus 7 really do love pizza. We'll deliver it for you. Hmm. Wait, you will? Isn't this like a waste of your precious world-saving time? Not for Sigma 7 Joy. She may be obsessed with pizza, but she's also one of the most powerful Joys in the multiverse. We do favors for her sometimes to stay on her good side. The interdimensional do-gooders pay the pizza girl and bid you all farewell. Your friends are relieved the plan works, and you're impressed with how cool you know you can potentially become. You're never gonna be that cool, though, you're way too horny, but you still earn two smarts and one charm for being tangentially associated with Captain Nez. Why can't we ever become Captain Nez? Is it because he has post-nut clarity? I think that may be it. Anyway, week one night, who do we talk to? Let's sit with... Natalia and Joy! You walk over to where Joy is relaxing with her book by the firelight, ready to ruin her privacy. But before you can sit down, Dolly appears with a laptop. Ah, yes of course, ten minutes after saying that we respect our friends' privacy, we just go ahead and violate them anyway. Joy, thank goodness you're not busy! I have something important to discuss with you! Oh yeah, sure, I'm not busy at all with this book I've been trying to finish since I got here. And I'm only on page 15 because people keep interrupting. Yeah, great, okay, I need you to be serious and stick with me for a moment. This is very important! Dolly opens the laptop to a PowerPoint presentation. It's got a rainbow gradient background with lots of text transitions, and it's titled Improving the Coven by Dolly Aquino. <laughs> you see, Joy, it's my duty as a Coven member. You are, you not, are not a Coven member. <laughs> to always keep an eye on the Coven's performance and look for ways to improve it. It's one of the benefits of having a member with a military background. No need to thank me. Uh, Don't worry, I won't. Uh, now let's start with efficiency! I've analyzed lots of the Coven's previous adventures, and they always rely on a magic spell or artifact saving the day at the last second! What a plot well, of course! That's how you build suspense! Otherwise, there's no dynamism to how the plot unfolds! 
true, but it's a waste of resources. I propose that we have one super spell artifact that we could use in all situations. I've suggested a magic bazooka. Not um, I'm not doing that. Next up, the dress code. You, Faith, and Hope have got this black and purple color scheme down, but your outfits are also different. Therefore, I propose we put out a standard issue coven uniform. Preferably something camo that will show off my rippling abs. A uniform? No way! Haven't you ever heard of expressing individuality? What? Soldiers don't need to express individuality, Joy! They just need to take orders and look hot doing so! Joy is rolling her eyes so hard that you're worried she's going to have a stroke. Maybe you can suggest uh, an improvement and end this argument. Uh, well, the Coven's power is based on the Triple Goddess. They always have need for three members, not four, so... After much analysis, I've concluded that the Coven needs to be 80% more anime. Let's go with... The Coven only needs three members, Dahlia, I'm so sorry. Nice touch. Yes, that is an excellent point, Nez. This is something I've been saying for a very long time. Ugh. Like, such a fucking long time, honestly. <gasps> oh, right, I totally understand. Rules are rules. Uh... So, who's gonna break the news to Hope? To Hope? We're not kicking Hope out. The Coven, nay, the world can't lose Hope. That's why every time Hope dies, we have to do this huge thing to bring her back. Because Hope is the last thing you lose before ultimate destruction. Aww. Ah, I see! Well, it can't be you, Joy, because you're the cool badass leader. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Mm. And we can't lose Faith either. She's our level-headed voice of reason, and she's too good at making coffee for the team to give up. Mm. Yes, that is true. Faith does make a mean cup of joe. Wait, so what do we do? If we can't lose Joy, Hope, or Faith, who do we need to kick out? Hmm. Hmm. Well, um, I don't know yet. Maybe since you have this whole military background thing, you can decide who's the least optimal and report back to me. Okay, good idea! Thank you for entrusting this difficult task to me, Joy! I promise I won't let you down! What? Don't look at me like that! I just couldn't say it to her face! She looks so sincere and stuff. I'm sure she'll figure it out eventually. In any case, thank you for helping me get rid of her, Nez. You're a great ally to the Coven! Hell yeah, you are. Maybe Faith does make the best coffee, but you definitely make the best friend. Ah! Time to get the drinks out. We will use our skills. That weekend, you feel like getting wasted, so you go visit none other than one. Hola. You know, when I started making magical drinks, I never thought people would actually come to drink them. But hey, who am I to judge? So let's get to it. And away we go. What do we have? Ooh, a flask. Okay, let's try to fight over the flask. You two assholes, stay in your lanes. Stay in your lanes, we need the flask. Stop pushing us away. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Stay there. Ah, oh, thank God. Okay, we got it. The flask genie. I managed to catch a genie inside that flask. It took me years and you just drank it. I hope you ask for an important wish at least, like ending world hunger. Fuck yeah, you wish to spend more time with your summer crush. Put it on my tab. And this is the part where I leave before you puke all over me, ciao. Bye, Juan. Week two, morning. Wherever I go, where do we hang out? Last. Let's go to the woods. That day, go searching the woods for edible wildflowers to make a delicious wildflower soup. You heard that some well-known flowers like lilies and tulips are actually poisonous. You decide to find out which flowers are bad by eating them all. A few hours later, you vomited up all the contents in your stomach and have a comprehensive list of which flowers not to put in the soup next time. Nice, you gained two smarts. Wildflower soup forever! And after all of that, you're just wandering, basking in the summer vibes, until something catches your attention. It's Joy, and she seems happy. You need to go see what's happening. Hey, you. Oh, hey, Nez. Welcome I've got some good news. Over. The team is back. I was just sexing my coming girls in their group chat. Hope is back from her trip, and Faith has a few days off from her summer job. Hmm. And they all said they're taking some time to visit camp. Isn't that great? Ah, I miss them. Now that we're back together, we can fight evil and train and make for the lost time. Ah, jeez. Joy is in fond of the idea of just relaxing, isn't she? A few days later, after that convo, Faith arrives at Camp Spooky. The witch's reunion is cute! It's sweet to see Joy in a good mood for a change. She's especially excited. Over the last few days, you've been helping her prepare her magic training program for the two of them. But today, she's dead set on getting back to work. Uh -huh. Hey, Joy. Friend Joy, myself and friend Faith are doing some crossword puzzles. Would you like to join us? Mm. Oh, that's fun. You know I love me some crosswords, but I prepared a surprise for today. Oh. Sudoku's? Like oh, Sudoku's are fun. Let's save no, a magic training program tailored for the two of us to get back into the save the world mood. Mm. 
Ah, that's nice. But, I mean, the world is like, okay right now, right? I could really do with the crosswords and chill day. But, Kathy Lester here told me you're an ace when it comes to crosswords. Indeed, it is true that I told Faith that Joy is very good at crosswords, which is also true. I like true statements very much. Ah, um, sure. Just give me a second, guys. This is no goodness. It looks like Faith has gotten a little lazy. Summer can do that to you, I guess. I know relaxing is good for you, but I think she's forgotten how important it is to stay alert, in case the world needs saving. But don't worry, I spent the last few days writing like 12 different contingency plans depending on the situation. In case Faith was hypnotized by the decadent temptations of Summer, I came up with an unorthodox plan, reminding Faith that dangers are still out there and that evil doesn't care about Summer vacations. Mm -hmm. And the best way to remind Faith of that is by bringing out her nemesis, Evil Faith. The world is at Months ago, again. Faith told me that after escaping her evil dimension, Evil Faith was lurking in our dimension, waiting for the right time to murder her. If that's not a danger... I know, I know, it doesn't sound like a nice thing to do, but believe me, I'm a good leader, and we need to focus on the big picture here. So help me, the last step I have yet to figure out is how to make Evil Faith come here. I'm sure there's a way. This does not sound like the best plan, but I guess it's time to help summon Evil Faith. Ah, uh, well... Use pure logic. If Evil Faith is like the opposite of Faith, then obviously her phone number is just Faith's number but with the digits in the opposite direction. Or lure her with delicious bait. Spread a fake promo for free pizza for anyone that comes from a different dimension. We will use pure logic. Seriously? That sounds pretty dumb. You insist that you have nothing to lose. Ugh. But by that logic, we could start typing random digits and try this a million times until we find her. There would still be nothing to lose technically. Pretty please? Fine, let's see. And so Joy grabs her phone and makes a call. Oh, Hello, sorry to bother you. We're trying to find Evil Faith, but we just called a random number, so please accept my apologies in advance. <gasps> oh! Yeah, that's me. Mm. She's here! Kira's in Camp Spooky! Yes, yes, I guess she has that same smug expression of hers in her face, if you want to call it that. Bye. Sure, bye. She hangs up. Well, that was just a coincidence, okay? Not long after, your special guest appears in the lake. Evil Faith! Hello, you puny coven. Oh no! Faith, look, it's Evil Faith! Your nemesis! It looks like Crossword's time is over! We'll need to fight her for all that's good in the world! What? No. And can you please stop calling me Evil Faith? What? Aren't you evil anymore? Aw, oh, sweetheart, of course I am. But my name is Faith. They don't force you to change your name when you change dimensions. You're vegan, right? Our Joy never was, and you don't see me calling you Vegan Joy. Well, whatever, fine. Faith, since Hope isn't here, we should do a dual prism formation to take this villain out. Right. Wait, wait. I'm not here to fight you, relax. Damn, it's summer vacation. Then why are you here? I just forgot my Netflix password. I wanted to binge watch Charm using a new device and you know, when you get used to the autocomplete password and you're suddenly told to write it again, then you draw blank? Yeah, I've been there. Cool, so can we set aside the me trying to murder you shtick for a second? I'm pretty sure we have the same Netflix password. I guess. Time you spend binge watching Charm, this time you don't spend doing evil things after all. Type in your favorite salsa, then the date in which Grace died, whenever that was in your dimension, and you should be good to go. <laughs> Let me try. It worked! Perfect! Thanks, bye. Oh, nice! We saved the day! I guess so. Faith, oh, wow! Girl. Faith! Boo! What you doing here? Hi. Visiting Joy and spending a couple days to chill. We're just doing crosswords. Wanna join us? Ooh. Oh, I see. It just so happens that I have, like, the best crossword book at my tent. Wanna come with me and grab it? Oh. But we have a crossword book right here. Hmm. Girl. Oh, right. Um, sure. I'm gonna go help Polly with that, uh, crossword book. It'll be a minute. <laughs> More like two hours. Right. Should we all meet up later to cook a nice dinner for tonight? Um, uh, sure. Bye. Cool. See you later. This is badness. We I'm technically saved the day, but Faith is getting too comfortable. What if evil arises when we least expect it? <gasps> The stress is eating me alive! I need to chill by designing more contingency plans in case of emergency! Come help if you want! You have a very different definition of chilling, but hey, if this is what Joy wants, you design a lot more unorthodox plans, which grants you three creativity! Joy's kind of a workaholic, isn't she, friendos? How will we get her to chillax for a bit? Let's go to Scout HQ! That day, all the scouts make a braid chain as a team-building exercise. You learn all sorts of new ways to braid hair. But the person braiding your hair accidentally ties the infinity knot into your hair! There's no way to untie it, you can see it to infinity! 
But right before Coach gives you the worst haircut of your life, you see how all of your friends will die. It's useful in helping you eliminate David Davidson, the doomed deer person from your romantic prospects. You also watch every Marvel movie that will ever be released. You gain true creativity from witnessing so many plot twists. Oh, hi. Hey, Nez, guess what? Yesterday night, Hope came to camp. Duty calls. Now we can start discussing all the new battle formations I was brainstorming last week. I'm so excited. Whoa, this girl really needs to unplug from the whole saving the world thing. But isn't she adorable in her own way? Hey, girl. This Mila person is hilarious. We're doing wine by the lake day. Why isn't this a coven custom? Yeah, fun story. I thought we'd met before, but it turns out she's died like three times already. Well, it wasn't me, but other versions of myself. The reality was mended, so everyone remembers them as if it were me. It's fun if you don't think about it too much. It is. Hey, here's a toast to not meeting in that fashion again for a long time. Cheers. But, but, what about discussing battle plans? Battle what now? No, no, Joy, you know I love you, but don't be a buzzkill. My battle plan today is to punch this ball of wine with my mouth. Preach! <sighs> but hope! Joy, focus, we need to defeat this treacherous wine! My goddess. Oh no, not again! At this rate, I'm starting to think summer vacations were a villainous invention to lower heroes' guards. Yeah, sure, that's it. Uh. It didn't work exactly for Faith, but I think a villain will do for Hope. She's died like three times already, so she knows the death threat when she sees one. Mm. But there's no evil Hope anymore, so who could be a good coven villain at hand? Did somebody say villain? I'm a villainous bastard! Come on, Joy, you need to accept me as one of the coven's next big bad! I will set the world on fire! Typical. Oh, hi, Damien. I mean, fuck. We need a swift solution to this, so I guess. Hmm. But I don't know. This is to scare Hope. And did you have, like, a massive crush on her? Uh, Hope? I mean, uh, not at all. I totally moved on. Hope is old news. That precious small bean can fuck her right off. I'm your villain. Fine, I can work with this, but you don't look like a villain. Villains have some sort of flair to them, intimidating stuff that makes you know they're bad news. You just look like a jerk. You're missing something that puts you into truly villainous aesthetic territory, but what? Nez, any ideas? Yeah, Nez, think of something. Totally unrelated to Hope being here, but make sure this thing also makes me look hot. Oh, are we playing wingman? What do we do? Design a cursed mask that conveys an unimaginable sense of dread and danger. What could go wrong? Or it seems like the Coven villains have a tendency to go shirtless. Is shirtless like evil? Anyway, no one complains about Damien going shirtless, right? No, we will design a cursed mask. A true artist can make a mask with anything, so you dig into your pocket to see what you have. Yeah, this could work. Do I convey dread and danger? Uh, what is that? Is that a pancake? Um, what were you doing with that pancake in your pockets anyway, Nez? Emergency breakfast, duh! Mm. Fuck, I really am desperate. Okay, here goes nothing. Hi. Hey again, girl? Are you finally going to join us in our battle against wine? Sure. The world is at risk oh again. no, Hope, look! A dangerous villain! We for sure need to go through with our battle plans to defeat him! What, where? Behold, it's me, uh, Damien! -us. Damien? Are you looking for an excuse to bump into me again? This isn't my uh, no, I mean, it's not Damien, it's Damienus! But if I was Damien, I would not be doing what you just said! Oh, just stop, you hot red idiot! Uh, how did you know it was me, Hope? Seriously? You can smell the desperation coming off of you a mile away. Ooh, no sunscreen needed for this level of shade. Gah! Beautiful and smart! You little adorable fucking whole package! Is what the old Damien would have said, new Damien is totally over you. I'm, I'm here at summer camp looking for a summer love, and I'm totally over you. Sure. Mm -hmm. But then this is only hypothetical. If I still had a tiny little crush on you, would you describe that as unrequited or... Damien! Drop it, Damien. Fuck, okay, I'm okay. Mm. Look, I get it, I'm stunning. But you can't cling on to the memory of a summer camp a decade ago or so. Sure, that summer night felt like magic. Two kids slow dancing to ABBA. Feelings were all so new, so intense. You remember! Of course I do, dum dum. But we were just kids. You don't have a crush on me, you just have a crush on those memories. Huh. It wasn't even me. It was the first hope. You just hold on to those memories. Those memories were real! The feelings were real! Can you get over yeah, it they were. But I moved on, so should you. You know, one of us is lying in her lonely bed and all that, and it's not me. The whole look at me, I'm a bad boy shtick is fun and all, but I know I'd grow tired of it. Not my thing in the long term. Huff! <laughs> it's okay, dames. People grow, people change. And time heals a broken heart. Ten years from now, we'll look back at this and laugh. You'll be with someone else, being happy, and I'll be happy for you. 
Or maybe 10 years from now, we'll one day crash back into each other. We'll be different people, I may literally be a new hope, and then maybe, who knows? We'll go for a coffee, catch up with each other, time and life are weird things, aren't they? But today I can tell you, there's nothing here. Move on, I set you free. Ugh! Bye. Fair enough. Bye, Hope. Bye. Bye, dames. Just, wow. Hmm. That was sweet, but now could we? No way, boss. I've seen through your absurd plan. Today, there's no greater danger than not finishing this bottle of wine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to put my mouth to better use. Milo, another round. Ugh! <sighs> These witches! I love them, but by the goddess, it's like they're allergic to work! Witch, Don't please. give up, Nez. Third time's a charm. She says that as if you're the one addicted to work. In any case, you don't know if third time's a charm, but you surely gain three charm. Week two, night. Who do we sit with? Let's go with... Moss Man! Good evening, Good evening Nez. I hope you enjoyed your day at summer camp. My day is only just beginning. My people are mostly nocturnal, so I rarely spend time awake during daylight hours. So while you and your other campmates get to frolic around in the sunshine and hear all sorts of juicy, titillating, world-rocking gossip, I am here sleeping away in my tent unaware of it all. Which is gossip. why I am hoping that you, popular soul that you are, would be willing to tell me a bit of gossip you may have heard through the grapevine. Aw, oh, poor nocturnal moss man. You're not going to deny such a cute giant insect person his gossip, are you? Time to concoct some gossip and slander, all in the name of being a good friend, of course. Uh, choose one. Astral projection, experimental ska, extreme snail racing, helium-fueled karaoke. Extreme snail racing. Contagious laughter, incorrigible sexiness, terminal stupidity, distrust of modern medicine. And type in a fun summertime activity. Let's go with boinking. Wow, I slept through that? I can't believe it. I'll have to pull an all day or just to spread this news around, but it will be worth it, see you. Your hot, thick, juicy gossip makes its way around the campfire in no time. Yes. Hey, I just Life heard something strange. really strange about Nez, listen to this. He was apparently a participant in a super weird pharmaceutical experiment. They were testing a new drug that would possibly cure the distrust of medicine, and of course, Nez was the perfect guinea pig. It was a month-long trial, and Nez had to deal with lots of bizarre side effects. Like a runny nose, excessive farting, permanent acne, and a sudden obsession with extreme snail racing. Ultimately, the drug was a failure, and it's still not FDA approved, but hey, this never stopped anyone before. Huh. But the funniest part is, and you did hear it from me, the drug gave Nez a permanent boinking fetish. Seriously, if you even mention boinking in front of him, he nuts immediately. But so I guess do with that info what you will next time you see him. Your super salacious rumor cost Nez zoo boldness. And time for drinks. Let's go with a gamble. That weekend, you feel like getting wasted, so yeah, 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 we're here for a drink. We got Phobia Shots! Quite appealing, right? Don't know if I drink that, but the real question is, will you? I also have this mystery box, because at this point, who knows what you drink? No, we'll take the shots. Yeah, no, totally, I was testing your common sense. And you pass, your prize is the drink you chose. Phobia Shots! Let's do some Phobia Shots, yeah! You know what they say, if you can't ever overcome your fears, drink them! Cheers to you! Doing that is surely bold! Shots! 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 Hope you can stomach that! Happy trails! Week 3, morning! Where do we hang out? Move, Let's Come go on, to sir. the Camp Dome! While you're in the throes of a battle at the Camp Dome, one of your teammates suddenly gets shot by three swift arrows. While slowly dying, he asks you to take two charm he had hanging around his neck in the silver locket. It's a family heirloom. He wants you to take it to his father and tell him his son died in battle. While crying, you promise to do so. You'll honor his death. Thing is, later you end up binge-watching 15 episodes of Garfield back-to-back -back and totally forgot about your promise. Oopsies. You and Scott are about to engage in your favorite stress-busting activity, Sudden Death Badminton, when Joe and Kathy Lester show up to poop the party. But you know, if anyone was gonna poop this party, you're glad it's a pair of campers with such fine asses. Please. Hello, friends. We are here because I have statistically determined that you are the pair of campers most likely to accidentally injure yourselves or others during the dome game. And also because it looks like Scott is about to try and eat a stick of dynamite. Can I not do that? But it's red! To mitigate the risk posed by you two, we have organized a viewing of the Timeless Safety VHS, How to Not Get Your Ass Killed in the Camp Dome, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Ooh, movie time! I'll grab some snacks! No, Scott, this is a popcorn bag full of dynamite. Put it down. Aw, oh, okay. Calculester pops the VHS into your portable VCR and you sell down for some informative video content. 
The video is great! You learn how to evade sports bees, how to stay calm when your face is on fire, and the proper silverware to use when drowning in acid. Finally, you get to the last lesson, what to do during a werewolf attack. That sounds great! Oh boy! I've never been present and conscious during a werewolf attack, so this is really useful information for me! Scott, you are a werewolf! The best way to survive a werewolf attack, says the announcer, is to not provoke one. Never under any circumstances expose a werewolf to a full moon. Hmm. No! Full moon! Got it! To help you recognize and avoid a full moon, says the VHS, here is a high-definition picture of one. Please don't show this to any werewolves! Don't show this to any... No, friend Scott, it is pronounced werewolves. We're wolves. Such a twist. I don't think he can hear you, Calculester. I think he's too busy turning into a werewolf because we showed him a picture of a full moon. Oh no, you are correct. And friend Scott has eaten the VCR before it could teach us how to stop him. However, will we turn him back without a soothing VHS narrator to guide us? Ah, uh, well. During your dog trainer phase, you learn how to teach all sorts of tricks. Like sit, play dead, and turn back into a hot buff dude. Or to err is to human, make Scott err! Uh, Scott turned back into a hot buff dude! You got this! You pull out a bag of scotch treats, actually just six of dynamite with explosive charges removed, and get to work. Wow! Werewolf Scott will do anything for those scotch treats. Look at him sitting still and shaking hands and not licking his own penis. Hell yeah. Great, this is working way better than it has any right to! Now quick, turn him back into a hot buff guy! Whoa, 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 not so fast, as they say in dog training business. Dogs are like bicycles, you can't just turn them into hot buff guy right away. You've got to work up to the main event, run him through some basic tricks first. You hit all the classics, playing dead, cooking a souffle, not mauling anyone for 45 seconds. You even get him to bark I love you and finish and pee through a hoop. All good things must come to an end, plus you're out of scotch treats. You make the necessary gesture and call out the trick. Hey, oh, okay, what hot buff dude should I turn into? Scott, fantastic! Uh, uh, Alright, I'll turn into Scott! One second! <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it! It turns out it's really hard to turn into something you already are! That was... You did great, Scott! You did great! Other than those 30 people you mauled while you were a werewolf! But let's be honest, this is Camp Spooky. Their days were numbered. We're just glad to have you back, buddy. I'm so happy, I composed a song. It is called Ode to a Friend Came Back Scott in the End. Yakulesser's song is utter garbage, probably because his music algorithm is poorly trained. On the bright side, though, it gives you joy and Scott an excuse to sit with him and listen to some good music, so he can learn what it sounds like. You gain two creativity and one fun. And now time for week three, evening. Will Joyce still be a workaholic? We need to find a way to get her to relax! Where do we go? Let's go to... Scout HQ! That day in Monster Scouts, you all learn how to build scarecrows. That's vaguely nature-related, right? You decide to take a step further, though. You add a magical crystal you found inside a cave last month to your scarecrow and turn it into a sentient being! The scarecrow is very grateful to have been made alive. You take your new friend out for a soda and have a very pleasant afternoon. Then you're forced to disassemble him, just so the next group of scouts can use the materials. Your scarecrow begs you not to relinquish your gift of life, but you're a dedicated monster scout first. The scouts appreciate your dedication to the organization you're awarded to creativity. But we killed our scarecrow friend! Later, you're eating a s'more when suddenly your physical body starts to disintegrate. Are you dying? Oh no, Joy just used her magic to summon you into a bush near the lake. What a joy hey Nez, I hope breaking the laws of time and space to summon you wasn't too much of an inconvenience. Well... <laughs> but it was for a good reason. Look over there, we're reaching a critical state with hope and faith. You peek out of the bush, you only see Faith doing some Sudokus and Hope sunbathing while drinking some wine. Makes sense we're in Those two are too relaxed! Lowering your guard is too much of a risk! What if an evil beast appeared out of the blue and threatened their lives? Given Joy's track record with all this, you kind of doubt that. And then an evil beast appears out of nowhere and then is threatening their lives! Hope and Faith are startled, but quickly get into bow positions. <laughs> oh no! Let's save the world. Don't fret, girls, I'm here! Joy, what were you doing in that bush? No time for chit-chat, get in bow formation. Coven, unite! Did somebody say Coven, unite? <laughs> Dahlia! You are not Dahlia, how many times do I have to coven. tell you? You are not part of the coven! We need Dahlia. Come on, Joy, we can use the help. That thing is big! Typical. Whatever, we need to choose a bow formation. No time! Coven bow formation of the rising tiger! There's no such formation! Attack! The coven starts fighting, using all sorts of powerful magic spells! 
And then there's Zalia. Evil beasts, get closer! What's this? What's that behind your ear? Is it a quarter? Zalia, what the fuck are you doing? This is a coven fight. Chief, we must fight using magic. I don't know many magic tricks. Wait, it's okay. I think I know another one. This one is even stronger. Evil beast, listen. Think of a number from one to ten. Zalia, you can fight by not using magic. It's okay. But the coven approves, goddammit. Okay, then coven kick. She throws a kick, I guess. Then she throws some knives. Coven knives. Zalia, you, you don't need to scream everything you do. And you don't need to put coven on everything. Hold up, is the beast getting stronger? It seems. It seems it feeds on stress. You need to relax, Joy, you're too huh? stressed. You need to relax or the beast will only grow stronger. Uh, this would be less stressful if you two would practice more instead of slacking all the time. Gotta chill. Just breathe, Joy. You're making it worse. Oh no. Joy is quite close to becoming an accepted synonym for stress. It's up to you to help this witch to find some chill once and for all. What do we do, friendos? You have a magical artifact for this. It's an ancestral orb that adapts to the shape of your hand. The stronger you hold it, the more stress it absorbs. Or music tames the beast, and by beast you mean joy here. Subdue her stress through the power of lo-fi. Subdue her stress with lo-fi. You harness all the power of lo-fi you have within you. Concentrate, Nez. If you believe in lo-fi, you can shape reality. Your mind is lo-fi. Your body is lo-fi. Just a bit more. Yes! Hmm. Wait, what's that? Huh? Where's that sound coming from? From the power of lo-fi! Huh. This... this is actually relaxing. Yes, bask in it, Joy. Embrace lo-fi. Yeah, calm the fuck down for once, girl. I gotta admit, it feels good. Okay, that I think I'm not bad. relaxed. Is this what relaxation feels like? Yay! The beast seems to calm down. Suddenly, confetti cannons burst from the nearby bushes. It's a confetti party. <gasps> what just happened? This was all an intervention. A what? That sounds okay. We sense that you've been very stressed, even here, while you're on vacation. So we came up with this idea. We'd fool you into relaxing with your favorite activity, fighting evil. But the evil beast! Oh, that's Sobi. He's just another camper. If you weren't obsessed with work all day, you'd probably have met him by now. Hi! <sighs> Fine, I guess I was in fact having a little more trouble relaxing. Yeah, you think? Here for it's you. a good thing you have us here. What's a coven for if not to push each other to become better versions of ourselves? Hmm. Thanks. Now that you're finally chill, let's perfect it, yeah? This is I brought some Doku books for everyone. And wine, don't forget wine. <laughs> I love you girls. We love you, Joy. Hey, what's not to love? Aw, oh, this moment is so sweet to gain three charm just from witnessing it. You spend the rest of the day chilling, it's superb. It and there we go, we finally got Joy to chill. Time to take her to the meteor shower. Here we go. You go check on your favorite witch and her two best friends. Hey, you. Ah, hey Nez. I really want to thank you for helping me relax. Yeah, getting this one to chill for once is definitely impressive. Yeah, Joy, we were worrying about you. You're an amazing leader, but you need to learn how to disconnect sometimes. Do it for yourself. But the stakes are always so high! Which is even more reason to treat yourself from time to time. You deserve the rest. On, we man. save the world so everyone can live, even ourselves. So you shouldn't only live to save the world. Yes, balance is key. Even the greatest hero deserves to be happy. Girls, I miss you both so much. Here for you. We miss you too. Yeah. I miss you. You truly admire Joy. How she carries the weight of the world in her shoulders. But nothing makes sense if you can't take a break now and then just to breathe and enjoy life. As a fierce leader, learning to press pause and recharge may be one of the hardest adventures Joy Johnson Jojima's ever faced. But with you and her coven by her side, she may just do it. The rest of summer camp is a great start, and so you all get to chill and have wonderful days you will all remember forever. hey -oh, there we go! Sometimes you gotta treat yourselves, friend those after working so hard. And before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we felt like it was the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it, how those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies, sung for centuries. Wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. 
Even today, I can still close my eyes and I'm there. On that last summer night, feeling like I was just starting to live life. With all my friends around that campfire. So young and afraid. And so ready to start. And there we go, Joy's Genie Flask secret ending. If you friend those enjoy this run of Monster Cap, leave your comments down below, like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to always stay up to date with our videos. Until our next episode, my name is Nez and thanks for watching. See you all next time. Bye friend those! <laughs>